hey guys welcome back to a new video in this video i'll be showing you guys how you can add your ai to perform a finisher you see we created an ai which moves when we are not looking at it and after it reaches a certain distance it will perform this finisher so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, you don't need to follow the first one to do this but it will be easier for you guys i feel to understand what's going on also huge thank you and please subscribe if you like the video let's dive right into it all right so in my previous video we created this ai uh, so which moves towards us when we are not looking uh, mimicking the weeping angel concept so next what we want is as soon as he reaches a certain distance he will perform the finisher so let's go ahead and do that if you don't have been followed up till here it's fine you can use this individually as well as long as you have the move to in your behavior tree like a move to player I just delete these the old ones you can use it all right keep it Sorry. anyways let's continue ahead so first thing is uh, let's create the function uh, let's enable the contextual animation plugin if you haven't enabled it already so contextual animation uh now if you have that now let's go ahead and i will create a contextual anim scene let's name it cas underscore enemy finisher open that up if it's the first time you're creating this you'll find this rules asset empty so let's create one for that I click and create a data asset this one which looks like a pie chart and over that you will find contextual anim roles asset select that and car underscore enemy finisher okay so uh, for this we have two roles one is the stalker who's following us and the second one is the player so create stalker and make sure this character is true and if your capsule height is default just leave this as it is if, if you have changed it you can then uh, change it according to yours for mesh to component just see we have minus 90 on z for location and rotation I'll go ahead and add that minus 90 minus 90 see and create another role this is the player this character so I have done some changes 90 this is 35 minus 90 I think this is 270 270 that's minus 90 uh, for scale I think my character is scaled up I'll just quickly check that since I'm using the Mixamo character yes so space that as well if you're using the default just leave it as it is all right now uh, inside your contextual and I've seen make sure you have the correct role selected and click on update rules all right okay once that is done we need to select the primary role so primary role is the character from which you will be calling this function calling the contextual animation scene for us is the enemy so the stalker make sure you select that and save now Let's create a new anim set. So 
so I already have my montages ready. Make sure you have the correct padding motion ready. And yeah, so it's not wrong. We leave this as it is for now and for clear. Okay, so as you see, I have this, but it is weirdly placed. So let's fix that. So for I click on the player, and if you open mesh to scene, you will find your X, Y, and Z. I'll just add a positive 90 in the offset and click on reset scene. And let's check that out. All right. So probably a little bit more. 100. Okay, that's that looks right. Next, uh, click on my player again. And what I want to do is during this, I want to play a collision. To I want to remove the collision. If you see the capsules are intersecting, that will cause trouble. To do that, inside a collision behavior, we'll do ignore channels and then uh, click and add an element. For this, choose the role player and uh, we will ignore world static. We also want to ignore world dynamic and also pawn. Save and reset the scene. All right. Okay, now let's do some implementation first, then we'll add motion warping as well. Uh, for that, inside your enemy blueprint, make sure you have the contextual anim scene actor component. Same with your third person character or your player character as well. Okay, once you have that, now what we want to do is once the player moves to the player, uh, enemy moves to the player, we will check whether he is within a certain distance and perform this. All right. For that, let's open up our AI controller. We'll be doing that in that. I'll be adding a new function. This is perform execute or okay, perform finisher. Oh yeah, first thing we want is a distance vector. For V2, we'll do get player character and get actor location and plug that in V2. For V1, we'll do the same, get control pawn. actor location okay now we want to check whether this is less than let's do 90 if true let's perform the finisher <laughs> for the finisher um, you can either make an interface but I don't want to complicate things here. So let's just do it by custom event. So I'll create a new custom event. I'll name this perform finisher. First thing we want to do it only once so that it looks like a finisher, it finishes something. Uh, okay, now what you want to do is I can make contextual and binding context. Was it this one? No. Create contextual and scene bindings. You want to create this and choose your scene asset which you made and connect this here. And from params, we will do a make map. Yes, make map. 
So for key zero, first is your player. We want to do get player character. And from here, create, no, not create, con make contextual anim scene binding context and connect that to value zero. Next one is our stalker. Just duplicate this and do a self reference and connect that over here. And once that is done, drag in your contextual and MC in actor and we'll do uh, what was it called? Start contextual and MC. And we'll connect these out bindings. All right, now inside your AI controller from true. Just do get control pawn. We'll do a cast to your pawn. You can convert it to pure cast if this is the only pawn you're using. And I'll just do perform finishing. Let's check that out. Before that, we need to call this. So let's create a new blueprint task. Blueprint trace. I'll name this PTT perform finisher so what you want to do is on event receive execute ai from your control pawn call in the function which we just created control pawn you can cast to your pawn cast to sorry from controller not pawn cast to your pawn with AI controller and then call perform finisher and finish execute. True. That's all we need. Go into your behavior tree. After the player, call in your finisher as the next sequence and then I just like to add a wait. Now, let's check this out. So, it is not moving towards us. It looking he's slowly slowly moving towards us now i'll just stand like this all right so we are falling because of the collision let's fix that for that open your contextual anim scene again click on your player and in the movement mode, let's change it to flying. All right. Let's check it out. All right. There is a bit of offset problem. <coughs> because let's fix that now. Uh, for that, we will add motion warping. So inside your, make sure you have that plugin enabled again. Make sure you have motion warping enabled. Now open up the montage. Okay, so I already have created the notifies while testing. So you can just right click in notify state, create motion warping. Once you've done that, Inside warp target name, we'll do stalker. And yeah, that's it. You can save. Now, inside your contextual anim scene, you will add two warp target, warp point definition. First one, the warp target name will be stalker. Mode is primary actor, changes to custom. And inside params origin, we will keep it as player. Next, you want to change the walk target name to player, and this will be your primary actor. All right. Let's, I think, also probably I'll change the from 100. Probably 110. All right. 
have to check it out. Right, play. Yes. All right. Okay, since we have do once, now you can see the player is getting up. That is simple to fix. Open up the animation. So the animation which I have, this one, what I'm going to do is duplicate this. And I'll name it as anim dead idle. Open that up. Go to the last frame, right click and do remove frames 0 to 55. You can do it in your animation. Oh, the head still moving. I think there's still one frame left. That's fine. <coughs> now, inside my third person character, I create a new variable. I name this is dead. Compile and open up your animation blueprint. Inside my event graph, I have this variable. I'm going to just is dead and promote this to a variable. Compile and From locomotion, I just add a state is dead. Connect the variable. And dead idle. Now, uh, inside your custom event, while you're doing this, you can also call that thing so I copy my get player character cast to third person make this a pure cast and I'll set is dead to true also I'll disable movement Channel. There you go. So we have this rotation, we can fix that as well. But yeah, I think that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And yeah, do give a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this video. And see you in the next one. Thank you.